This is the primary flare port. The gas fire was lit about five minutes ago. And as you can see, this thick, choking clouds of smoke coming out of here. You'd think it's not working, but interestingly, when I light it, I get me a flare that's kind of hard to see. At the moment, it's looking uh, blorange. Yeah, blorange. There's not much of a flare there. It's pretty weak. And uh, I suspect that's because I've got so much charcoal sitting under my modified air injection nozzle. The air nozzle ends about an inch above the rim of the fire cup. doesn't have a hole in the bottom of it, but instead it has about 15 holes arranged around the last inch of the one inch diameter pipe going down uh, to just above the fire cup. So as a result you end up with the burn occurring above the fire cup and of course you don't have to preheat anything in order to get the burn started because it's just charcoal. Eventually the reaction works its way down to the fire cup and sits there. The result is I get me a nice clean gas stream and to put out the fire again and as you can see thick choking clouds of smoke not this is interesting I've had the engine running off this for I've got about 20 odd hours clocked up in this configuration Right now the gasifier is dead cold. Yeah, it's uh, just touched the metal work. It's heatless. So that's pretty damn good by Jones. So right now we've got orange and a little wee bit of blue up the top there. In extreme cases, it can actually have a yellow to it for a little while, and that just goes away, especially when the engine starts to really heat things up. I've got it connected to the Charlie engine right now, with that pipe right there. That goes down to the final filter on the Charlie, and its other end is tied into the dewatering towers of the Gasomatics 9000. So these take out the majority of the water before presenting cold gas over to the Charlie X camel hair filter. Actually I've got horse hair in here today to see whether horses can run faster than camels. We'll see how that goes, huh? I'm pretty pleased with the way the gas output from this has cleaned up. I've done a lot of experiments. Some of them have been disastrous and I ended up with rivers of tar. <laughs> which uh, I figure I might just sell to the local roading companies and they can use that to fix up some of our potholes. Yeah. A couple of minutes later, the Charlie has pulled the gas through the delivery pipe up to its burner. The flame's not easy to see, but yeah, it really is there, honest. Give that a minute or three to warm up a little old bit. And then I'll have a go at starting this grunt. Uh, What's cool is that I can start this engine, little 7 horsepower engine, without any accelerants. All I have to do is set the mixture properly with these, pray to the power gods and yank that rub a few times and electricity starts coming out. Sweet!
All right, the engine's dead cold, so is the gasifier, but it's starting to come to life. It might stall while I'm doing this. I'm in the process of killing it here. Let's give it a minute. It will either come to life or it will stall out on me. The gas flow is very slow, so the engine is having a hard time keeping alive. for a bit before I tried to put a load on it. If I switch on the house load right now, it'll probably kill the engine. But at least I can put the lights on. Woohoo! Wooden lighting. I'll need to nurse this for a few minutes until it really starts to come alive but hey, I'm happy now, after some time I'm going to stop the engine and show you what the primary flare looks like it actually turns blue and stays blue so this orangey flare we had here from the primary port will become blue after the engine has heated the gasifier. Pretty amazed with the results I've got from the latest modification to the Phoenix gasifier project. As um, I have to admit, my early experiments were disastrous and I produced huge quantities of tar and I was running that engine on dirty gas. It survived because while I was careful but um, my latest lot of experiments have pretty much knocked that problem on the head. And I finally got me a gas at the I can trust for the rest of the winter. So, good news all around. Happy wood gas bugs. And happy me too. Hehe, <laughs> sweet as. Alrighty, it's a few minutes down the track and I've got the house circuit plugged into this generator. It's pushing about 700 watts, so you can hear it straining a bit there. Now, if we look down to the nozzle, you can see it's glowing quite nicely down there. I've learned that I can put diesel, little drops of diesel down here, or sump oil, stuff like that while the engine's going. I might get extra horses. Sweet. That means all the old sump oil I take out of the engines when I do oil changes can go down this and little dribs and drabs to make power for that engine and the house batteries. Needless to say, I'm pretty pleased with the way this has turned out. Let's see if I can demonstrate what, emphasis on watts here, what happens when I put oil, tomato sauce oil, into the air intake. No immediate effect, as you'd expect. But give it a few moments to work its way through the flame observe the settings on the mixer panel here. To give it time to have an effect. It almost stalled. I was just in time to give it more air compensate for the suddenly enriched gas flow. Of 
course, when the oil runs out, I have to go back to where I was before. Works the same way with diesel too. I don't know if you want to wait for this effect to diminish. But I'll put it back to where it was to see how well it runs. Well, it was around about there before. If I hadn't actually moved it, it would have stalled because of the sudden enrichment of the gas. So it's like one more use for a gasifier. We can get rid of all sorts of junk, including old sun oil. Hot stuff. Alright, that's an open and shut case, I think. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time, Carl. What I'm going to do is shut it off and fire up the primary flare to get an idea of how clean the gas flow straight from the gas supply really is. Here we go. It's darker around here. Wood gas bugs could be approaching. Let's try the primary flare. Open the valve, turn on the blower. We've got smoke coming out of there. Not very much, but you can see it. Light him. And this is the rubbishy gas I've got to put up with. It's terrible. What use is that? Nowhere near enough tar in that. I miss my FEMA gasifier and its tarry engine waking goodness. Not. So fellas, if you want to uh, have a bit of a tutu with a nozzle on your gasifier, you might be able to get a rubbishy blue flare like this straight from yours. I can only guess it, why it works like this. It's I've got the, the prime or the, the flare inside or the burn chamber, burn area inside the gasifier occurring about an inch above the flame cup. So instead of the air being pushed straight into the flame cup, it's occurring at least an inch above. So the burn in the hopper is occurring uh, mainly there. And then heading down towards the flame cup area. What I think is happening is because there's more charcoal involved in the hottest part of the reaction, it's assisting in cleaning the gas by perhaps increasing the residence time. Yeah, I ain't going to complain too bitterly about that. The only problem with it is that there's not very much gas there. I get about a thousand watts out of my engine and uh, I'm actually obliged to use the 7 horsepower one on the Charlie instead of a 13 horsepower one down here because it just won't run properly. It runs on petrol or gasoline but for some reason it's not running on wood gas anymore so maybe I need to clean it out or fix something that's broken. But fellas and fellaisses and other wood gas bug nick nick victims, you would surely agree 
But that ain't bad. <laughs> There's a primary flare coming straight from Zygasathaya's belly. If I complain, the wood gas bugs will get me. So, I ain't gonna complain. Alrighty. Now to shut this horrible blue flame off and go back to generating some much needed electricity trees. Ciao for now my good friends.